In our top story for this hour, on Saturday, Deputy President Sora Ramaphosa's bid to stop publication of the article based on leaked emails was rejected by the South Gauteng High Court. Judge Bashir Vali said that this was not enough evidence to support Ramaphosa's claim that the application was urgent. The Deputy President Sora Ramaphosa has termed the leaked emails as deliberate campaign to smear him. In, on the terms that he has asked for, he has placed insufficient information for this court to assist him in this regard. Accordingly, I have come to the conclusion that the matter is not urgent and that the matter should be struck for want of urgency. As far as costs are concerned, it is, sought, uh, the, it is claimed by the respondents that given the circumstances under which this matter has been brought, they were required to brief two counsel to deal with the matter as it would not be possible for one counsel to deal with all the complications factual in particular uh, to deal with all the factual complications regarding the application and the circumstances under which it was brought uh, by one counsel alone. Accordingly, they've asked for the cost of two counsel. I'm satisfied that there was, and the applicant himself has come to court with two counsel. I'm satisfied that in the circumstances of this matter, there is justification for the usage of the services of two counsel, and accordingly I make the following order. The application is dismissed, uh, the application is struck for want of urgency. The applicant is to pay the costs, in which costs are to include those occasioned by the employment of two counsel. That's the order of this court. Thank you. Court is adjourned. But here's what transpired in the court. Ramaphosa's counsel has argued that the story is based on doctored emails that were obtained illegally. The Sunday Independent says one of the women in question was contacted, has confirmed the email and its contents. Now, Ramaphosa's counsel alleged that there was lack of genuine desire to give the applicant a chance to respond. The newspaper said if Ramaphosa had time to issue a statement, he could have responded to the Sunday Independent. Ramaphosa wanted the interdict plea should be treated as urgent. But the Sunday Independent said the urgency was of his own making. Ramaphosa has complained that the correspondence was leaked to the media before providing a chance to respond. Now, Judge Bashir Vali dismissed the argument, saying Ramaphosa had enough time to respond to the allegations. Quite excited because this is victory for the truth, a victory for the freedom of the press, and also victory against uh, double standards in the South African media. Uh, Sir Ramaphosa presents himself as a, a man of integrity, and in fact, it has been proven today that uh, he is not. He is dishonest. In fact, he is also a liar. If we uh, heard what happened in court. Uh, his uh, legal representatives lied openly, amongst other things claiming that the owner of the Sunday Independent uh, has in fact given an undertaking that the, the editor must not uh, publish. Mm -hmm. That's a lie because we've just seen there was a tweet coming out uh, confirmed by one of the journalists that whilst he's in China, Iqbal, he did not do so, but they came in court because they have no case. Here's what Ramaphosa said in his statement released earlier. My private emails were illegally obtained, deeply disturbing suggestions that I paid money to several young women with whom I was supposedly in relationships. They are 54 young students that my wife and I provide financial assistance to. Unfortunate that evidence of these bank transfers have been used to make scandalous allegations against me. Disturbing that the privacy of these young women have been violated through the publication of their names and pictures. The likelihood that state agencies and resources are being used to promote factional political agendas. But Ramaphosa's defense has failed to cut ice with many. The MKMVA says these allegations, if true, will have an adverse impact on the moral of the anti-HIV AIDS campaign. The deputy president has been uh, leading the moral regeneration uh, program and also the HIV and AIDS uh, program. So I think it will work against him in that way because people will then begin to say, how can a, a leader speak about moral regeneration and 
speak about the HIV and AIDS, and when you have extramarital uh, affairs, so it will make people to lose confidence in his uh, leadership. But uh, with the ANC, uh, I, I don't think uh, members of the ANC will really uh, buy into the story because they will say it is a, 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 a campaign. But for, for him, if it is true, he should have allowed the, the processes, just like uh, the Gupta emails were allowed to be published and no one interdicted them and they've been used in the uh, media for a long time to attack the Guptas. So everyone, I think, if there are such allegations and if you know that you've got nothing to hide, allow them to be published and uh, those who have hacked them will have to answer how did they get hold of those emails. The whole controversy raises some very serious questions. Some can ask the Deputy President's personal life be made public, but other questions a public figure's right to privacy. One may question whether these allegations, if true, will cast a cloud over Deputy President's presidential campaign. But the timing of the story also raises questions over the motives. Now another question is whether it will be a good option for Ramaphosa to step aside until his name has been cleared. But, as Ramaphosa claims, this may also be a ploy to tarnish his image. No, we know who these women are because the names are being published, but we don't know them personally. We don't know where they come from, and we don't know if they appreciate us invading their privacy like that. I think everybody deserves some level of sanctity and protection of their privacy, much like I think the, 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 the President Jacob Zuma, his privacy was also violated when his, his life was, was portrayed as a, as, as a, as a non-caring polygamist. I think his, his, his polygamy practices were something that was not of interest to us. It was none of our business. Yet the media still went and invaded the, the, the privacy of Jacob Zuma in that instance. I think the very same thing is happening in this instance. Following the interdict win, the Sunday Independent has gone ahead publishing the story about Deputy President Sora Ramaphosa's extramarital sexual affairs. The paper has documents linking the deputy president to eight women. The paper reveals that Ramaphosa held three alternative email accounts under fake names and Ramaphosa communicated with women through fake emails. These email accounts were under the following names. Mambo Dimbanyika, Singo Mabaremisa and Mambo Velelambeo. Of course, we will be getting more details from that story.